The problem with bigger cows is they are bigger cows. Annual costs encourage producers to reduce calving problems, not by making cows even bigger, but by selection for calving ease and lower birth weights. There's a few different causes of calving difficulty, either the calf's too big or cow's too small or the presentation or shape of the calf can be an issue. But really the way we've addressed that primarily as an industry is for selecting for lower birth weights. Uh, we do now have calving ease as an EPD and uh, we can select for that as well. But after decades of selection, some are wondering, has the industry gone too far? You can lose the calf, you can lose the cow, and if a cow has trouble calving, she doesn't rebreed as fast. So we know that that costs the industry money. But we may not be totally sure what it's costing us if we get them too small. But I think we're there in some, some places and some herds, especially generation after generation after generation of uh, calving ease and low birth weight genetics, we maybe have, you know, pushed the limit. Factors like fall calving versus spring or cold weather versus warm and breed makeup will influence the ideal weight. There are still herds and operations. If you are still losing calves because of calving difficulty and you're pulling half your calves and your average birth weight is well above the industry average, you need to buy a calving ease bull. But if you haven't pulled a calf in a couple years and you have a bunch of little calves that aren't getting up and aren't nursing, and you're having some death loss on the little ones, it might be time to think about not putting so much downward pressure on that. University of Illinois Angus Steers showed a linear decrease in pre-weaning death loss as birth weights increased. But the effects could include lifelong performance and even final carcass quality. We, we know that that early in life is really important for uh, setting the intramuscular fat cells and so I, I think that if if there is a stress, I mean that's well documented cattle that, that aren't healthy as calves, you know, have poor poor marbling. So and it could be related to this calf birth weight and gestation length. I think it's it's possible that, that there may be an extreme there where yes, not only do we affect their growth, but ultimately we've maybe hindered their uh, actual potential to reach their true genetic merit for, for marbling and for quality as well. More research is needed to help uncover these relationships, Shike says. I'm Clint Mefford.